Hey everybody, I wanted to do a post hurricane update uh, with the uh, Westinghouse setup. Um, again, if you see my other videos, I've had this shed, um, although relocated recently to the other side of the house for, for some time, um, previously with the Duramax generator, um, uh, and previously pretty much uh, hard line into the natural gas um, in this setup just if you haven't seen my other video I have a, a quick connect in the garage here and I can just pop my quick connect hose through there and bring it in and, and hook it up to this tri-fuel generator um, so we are just a day out from actually having power now after her king barrel um, you know really basically hit a direct hit on Sugarland, which is where we live. And so we didn't have power for, I don't know, about 60 hours. And um, I ran on gasoline for the first three hours until we understood what the, the destruction was. And um, the benefit of that is I was able to, at about 6 a.m., even though the hurricane was still kind of hitting us, um, I was able to start the generator from inside of my garage um, with the remote start. And so, it basically was ready to go and we were able to get power around 6 a.m. Um, even though it was raining still pretty hard and winds and whatnot. And, um, you know, that was a nice uh, option. And then about 11 o'clock when I realized, yeah, we're gonna be without power for some time, I came out here and uh, transitioned over to natural gas. And so, you know, just quickly plugged in the quick connect there, dropped in the cable in my little flap, which goes into the garage and then uh, we were up and running for you know close to 60 hours uh, non-stop and um, wanted to point out a few things that i learned um, when we had last done a long generator run in this shed uh, it was during the freeze that texas had where the grid went out for multiple days and um, obviously those temperatures were different and so um, what I noticed this time around, um, unlike our short generator runs where we've had power outages and power has been out for four to six hours or so, um, you know, not only was it really hot outside once the hurricane had passed the next day, um, but, you know, obviously this thing was running a lot longer uh, periods of time in that hot weather. So I think in previous videos, you may have seen this was insulation. And um, what I noticed is it was just getting warmer than I, I'd like to see it. And I think, you know, that could be due to the little bit larger generator, but I think it had a lot to do with the heat. And so I increased the vent size over there, um, changed this out to cement board. And honestly, if I had to do this again, the entire thing would be cement board in there. Um, you know, as far as noise suppression, it really is a non-issue when you have a power outage. Nobody really cares that the generator is running because nobody has power, I, you know, and I threw, um, you know, an extension cord over to neighbor and uh, who could throw, throw more extension cords over to other neighbors. I had plenty of power from this generator, uh, even running AC. And, um, but yeah, I mean, what I realize is that when you're having a hundred degree plus temperatures, you know, it's probably best to leave this thing somewhat, uh, you know, open and not so closed up. So what I, what I did is this door was closed and I had the lid kind of pulled down and propped up like this. And, um, that protected it if we had, a, you know, any kind of rain that continued to come by later, uh, when the temperatures increased. Um, now saying all that while it was raining and the temperatures were cooler, there were no problems with it being closed up. It's just when those temps start to get, you know, up to a hundred or, or, you know, feels like a hundred outside, let's say a 90 and the sun's blaring down on this thing, it's probably better that it just be kind of propped open. So just keep that in mind. If you've built one of these, you know, if it's really hot outside, go ahead and let it breathe. I mean, there's no point in keeping it covered. The benefit of this shed is that you can keep the generator outside ready to go. Um, and you don't have to store it in your garage or, or, or whatever, you know, someplace that's maybe less convenient. And so I had a few questions. Um, people ask, well, why did you change out the spark plug right away? Um, so there's a few things. One, um, almost all these generator brands that are shipping right now seem to have some issues with uh, natural gas and the spark plugs they're shipped with. Not to say that they won't start, but they just are not cranking as easy as they could if you just replace the spark plug. Um, so I'll put that in the description. I also got questions about how this 
uh, transfer switch works. And so um, I have not only power going back to the house through the 6.3 cable, but I also have power from the house coming and I have wired that into uh, my outlet here. And so I have house power here all the time. And so this transfer switch um, basically will come from here. So it's, it's plugged in here and then it goes to the transfer switch. And then from there, I have um, a dual prong out. So I feed the trickle charger um, and I feed the fan here. And so, um, you know, what that does is it allows the fan to continue to run after the generator has run and turned off. I see a lot of people plugging their fan into this outlet. And the problem is you turn the generator off, you close the shit up and you walk away Well, it gets really hot in there. Um, you need that fan to continue to cool down the box if you're going to close it up after you've run the generator. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, um, you know, can this thing just run nonstop? People are asking, you know, do you need to let it cool down and, and stop? Well, as long as it's cooling well in the box, um, and like I said, I had it propped open, I, I mean, we didn't stop it. This thing ran and ran and ran and ran. And like I said, it, pretty much the entire house was, was on it. Um, so, you know, I, I couldn't, I didn't really see any issues with it. I, you know, I had put synthetic oil in it. Um, and I'm probably going to go ahead and change it. You know, it's been a little over 50 hours or 60 hours or so. And, um, it's probably, even though this, some things are saying, manufacturers saying you can run up to hundred hours, it was pretty hot. So, um, I think it's just going to depend on your weather conditions here in Texas. I would say I wouldn't go longer than 50, uh, hours without changing, even on full synthetic, um, oil, you know, tends to break down the hotter it gets and, uh, might as well keep the engine running as smoothly as possible. I'm also um, going to flip over to my panel and I want to talk about a few things over there uh, just as a reminder, um, not only about the interlock, but um, just a, a thing that I've added to tell me when the grid uh, comes back online. But yeah, I would just say overall, um, this thing rocked. Uh, we were um, you know, providing power for not only my entire house, my neighbor, uh, had, was using power to power refrigerator and, and other things. And, uh, we had plenty of people, you know, staying at our house. Um, and so we were happy to help. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and switch over to, uh, the, uh, electrical panel and talk a little bit about that. So this is my panel setup. Uh, if you've seen my previous videos, this is a newer panel. I had some work done on my house and we added more circuits and whatnot. Anyways, same thing, interlock. Uh, this protects uh, linemen um, on, working on the grid uh, so that you don't send generator power back into the, the uh, grid. Anyways, you move the main over to turn off grid power. That allows you to move this up and then you can turn your generator circuit on. And so what I typically do when this, when, when the power goes out, um, you know, I come in here, turn the generator on, I can hit the remote start here. Um, and then once I hear that it's cranked up, then I'll flip over the, uh, the transfer, uh, the interlock here and then transfer over on the generator circuit. Also wanted to uh, mention that I added this. Uh, it is a power return kit, and so it's a pretty low cost solution, but uh, I'm gonna turn it on real quick. Uh, but basically it alerts you when the power comes on. So if it's on, <laughs> makes a loud tone. I probably would only turn that on, um, you know, if in, in, in scenarios where I know, you know, it's daytime, I can't really tell if my neighbors have got power or not. Um, sometimes at night if the power goes out, you know, obviously it's obvious your neighbor's lights come on. Okay. The power's back on. Right. But this is a really quick way to know you can switch back to grid power. Um, you know, I hadn't really found many ways to determine that, you know, obviously big Generac installs and whatnot do kind of auto sensing and automatically switch over. But again, this is, you know, 25 bucks and, you know, pretty neat to be able to know when the grid comes back online. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, uh, I've mentioned this in my previous videos, I have a temperature sensor that uh, is Wi-Fi controlled or Wi-Fi tracked uh, that is in the generator shed. So 
uh, it can send me alerts if the generator shed gets too warm or I can also track um, the temperatures in there, but uh, good thing to add. It's again a low-cost thing uh, probably um, You know well worth uh, the 30 or 40 dollars. I paid for it. So again uh, Thanks for all the support over the years. Uh, please like and subscribe and uh, If you have any questions, I'm pretty good about responding to the comments. Thanks